watch me create this beautiful look while I educate you about something they do not teach you in history. Kalelizus. What is up? Okay, so I'm going to be starting a series of me doing my makeup while I talk about some random stuff. So today, I will be talking about the Simon Twins. So, we have June and Jennifer Gibbons. They were born in April 1963. Um, they were identical twins born 10 years, 10 years, 10 minutes apart from each other. They were born in Wales, which is a country that is a part of the UK on an army base. And they became known as silent twins. They had like their own language with each other and they wouldn't speak to anyone else for whatever reason um they spoke so it was english but it was just so slurred and sped up that no one could really understand them and they were obsessed with their twinship they moved in sync they did everything together and they were basically inseparable well so they started having trouble at school because they refused to read they refused to write they were the only black kids at the school they were attending, so they were always bullied and they were bullied so bad that they were sent home early before school actually ended. Because they weren't, they were refusing to read and write and all that stuff, uh, the school tried to separate them, but when they were separated, um, they refused, like, it was worse, so they refused to bathe, they refused to eat, they refused to go to the bathroom, all was crying. So they ended up going back to the same school together. So they barely graduated high school, but they finally did, and once they were graduated, they just isolated themselves even more into their house. They, the only person they really spoke to was their younger sister, and that was about it. But yeah, so they isolated themselves in their rooms. All they did was, oops, they did typical girl stuff, you know, wrote in their diaries, played with dolls, and then they actually started to hate each other. So when this started happening, everything they felt towards each other, they'd write it down in their journals. They had separate journals. And when they did start writing, um, I guess that kind of fueled their fire into writing novels, poems, short stories, and they hid all of this stuff in these bean bags that they had at home. Anyway, so they isolated themselves to the point where they, they were like, you know what, we need to get out of the house. We need to start exploring the world. I forgot to mention that their writing was very strange. It was about crime. It was about feeling trapped and lost. When they finally started to explore the world, they came into contact, or the first people they started hanging out with were these two American boys who were troublesome, you know, into crime, just all that kind of stuff. And so they ended up having this crazy summer, you know, rock and roll, sex, drugs, all, all of that stuff. And so over time, you know, the boys went back to America, but the girls started setting things on fire and, you know, arson. And they, so the first thing they did was they set a, I think it was a train on fire or a train station. Um, nobody was there, so nobody got hurt, but it just escalated from there. They started setting more things on fire, more buildings on fire, and so eventually they got arrested. Not a surprise. So they ended up in jail. Um, at one point, they were, a journalist visited them and stated that when the guards brought them out, they refused to move. They were 
lifeless, they looked dull, they just stood like with a blank stare in their eyes. But as soon as the journalist, men journalist mentioned that he had found um, their journals, June was like asked if he liked it. So the whole time they refused to talk, they refused, and then as soon as he asked about the journal, that was like the first thing they heard out of their mouths. They were then um, convicted of arson, clearly, because <clears throat> it was them. They went on an arson spree. So yeah, they were convicted of arson and they were sent to Broadmoor, which is Britain's most secure institution for the criminally, criminally insane. They were the youngest to go there at the age of 19. People disagree with this choice that they didn't need to be sent to that institution. However, no other institution would take them because during the interviews, they just felt that the twins were too spooky and too eerie. And so they were denied to go to any other institution. The doctors found them very disturbing and dangerous and so at first they were together in the institution but they just they couldn't stand each other so they ended up separating them but when they were separated they did crazy things so let's backtrack. They ended up being di diagnosed with schizophrenia. I can't even say that word. Schizophrenia. Okay, don't don't mind me. I can't say it. But they were diagnosed with that, and then they were heavily medicated, and basically it took them two years to finally start speaking again. I kind of got. I went two back. So it started off as they were together. Okay, then they were not coping well together, so they separated them, put them on different sides of the hospital in different wards. They started like freaking out, so one day one would eat and the other day the other would starve. Um, sometimes they, they found the twins like stuck in the same pose, like the same exact pose, even though they were in different sides, like opposing sides of the hospital. So that was, you know, pretty creepy. And then, you know, heavily medicated, two years later, they started talking again. Before we move on, let's talk a little bit about their writings. So in their journals, you know, uh, June would talk about how she often felt trapped or tortured um, by her sister. Um, she wrote that no one suffers like I do. Um, her dark or her sister is a dark shadow that's just robbing her of sunlight. Jennifer wrote how they have become enemies in each other's eyes. She's like, how do I get rid of my own shadow? Um, will I die? Will I live without my shadow? Um, basically just questioning their twinship. A decade later, yes, a whole decade. They were there for a decade. A decade later, they would be transferring to Coswell Clinic for possible release after a year. And so it's basically going from like a maximum security jail to a lower security jail, like a transition type of jail, and so um, they had that opportunity to finally get out and be free. However, before they left, they made a pact that one of them had to die for the other to be free. Like, so Jennifer, Jennifer was the one that was born second, and so they were, you know, constantly arguing about who it was that was gonna die and it turned out to be Jennifer so Jennifer would die 
so that they could live as one and the other could finally live to be free. So the crazy part is as they were in the bus or the car, whatever was taking them to transfer them to Coswell, um, Jennifer laid her head on her sister's shoulder and basically fell into a coma on the way to the other institution. Well, after she fell into a coma, they rushed her to the hospital where she was sadly pronounced dead at the age of, I believe it was 31. And till this day, they have no idea what really caused her death. There was something, there's just a whole bunch of different things that they think. They did say she had a lot of swelling around her heart, but they found no poison. They found nothing else in her bloodstream, no drugs. And yeah, so basically, this is how I see it. She thought her own death. Like she thought about the whole dying, like they believed it so much that she did die. I don't know, strange things happen. Once Jennifer died, June became a new person, like complete 180. And she was just free. I don't know about you guys, but what I learned from this was I'm never going to have twins because they're going to kill each other. No, I'm kidding. I've always wanted twins. But yeah, so this is a pretty weird story because they were so obsessed with each other. But it was like they couldn't live with each other and they couldn't live without each other. And then I really don't have one. I wonder if... Can you see it better with the light off? I want to put some like chapstick on, whatever. Hope you enjoyed. Um, still getting used to this YouTube thing, so yeah, bye.